Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain uh, uh, analog modulation method, which is called as angle modulation. Okay. In my last videos, I have explained already the working of or how exactly the modulation happens in case of amplitude modulation. That means how we change the amplitude of the carrier proportional to the amplitude of the basic signal. Now here, let us understand uh, the angle modulation and what are the different types of angle modulation is and what is the difference between the two methods what we call frequency modulation and phase modulation okay so let us understand the basic concepts of uh, angle modulation which is commonly used in uh, analog communication now see i start with the definition of angle modulation so the angle modulation is nothing but it is a process in which the angle of the carrier is actually changed according to the amplitude of the message signal or an information bearing signal or the signal which represents a information. So we change the angle here. We change the angle of the carrier or we change, vary the angle of the carrier proportional to the amplitude variation. Now what are the different types of angle modulation? Now this is the first one, the frequency modulation where we change the frequency of the carrier signal proportional to the amplitude variation and the second one is phase modulation where we change the phase of the carrier proportional to the amplitude of the uh, message signal. Now, let us consider uh, theta i of t is represents actually the angle of the modulated uh, sinusoidal signal, okay, which changes with respect to the time t. And uh, let us say that this particular parameter theta i of t actually changes proportional to the uh, some function of or is a function of the information bearing signal or a message signal. That means um, as the amplitude of the message signal changes, theta i of t, the angle part of the carrier also changes. Okay, so in that case, we can represent the signal as an angle modulated wave mathematically as something like this. This is the general representation of an angle modulated wave, where s of t is equal to ac cos theta e of t, where the amplitude of the carrier is constant, where s of t is a modulated signal and ac is the amplitude of the carrier which is kept constant and this is the angle part of any analog signal, right? So this particular angle part is actually varied proportional to the amplitude of the basic signal. Okay. Now, theta i of t, I can, I can write this you now in a uh, analog, uh, usually the analog signal is represented as ac cos 2 pi fct plus some phi, which represents all the three parameters of the analog signal, that is amplitude, the frequency and the phase. So I can say that this angle part actually represents two parameters. That is, the one is this one, the first one, Fc is the frequency of the carrier and phi is the phase of the carrier. So, if I change the frequency of this carrier proportional to the amplitude of the basic signal, we get the first one, that is frequency modulation. If I change the phase of the carrier proportional to the amplitude of the uh, basic signal, we get a phase modulation. Okay? Now, so, there some complete you know, oscillation you know, happens actually whenever this theta i of t changes by 2 pi radians. The complete circle you can see. Right? Now, so let us consider that you know this theta i of t is actually increasing monotonically. That means it is continuously increasing with respect to the time. Okay. Now we can calculate what is the average frequency variation happens okay, during that time. Let us say t to t plus delta t. A small variation of delta t I have considered here. Okay, and during that time interval, the angle part theta i of t has increased monotonically. Okay, now what is the variation of frequency has happened during that time? That can be calculated by using this particular formula. Just one second. Just one second. Yeah. So this is the formula which represents actually the change in the frequency for change in the time interval of delta t seconds. Okay, which is nothing but it is change in the phase at t plus delta t minus the original uh, no, angle, you can say, this angle basically, not phase, it's an angle. So, variation in the angle over the time interval of delta t is the original, hello, the angle divided by 2 pi delta t. So, this gives you the change in the frequency, okay, whenever uh, the phase, theta i of t changes by say at the time interval t to the t plus delta t, a small variation of delta t. Now, now if I assume that, if I consider that delta t is approaching 0, I want to find out what is the instantaneous frequency, okay, I want to find out what is the frequency at a particular instant of time. So, that can be done by um, putting this delta t 
to zero or limit under the limit uh, delta t considering equal to zero and uh, taking the limit of this particular function i will i can calculate what is the instantaneous frequency is that is f i of t represents actually the instantaneous frequency okay so just substitute the uh, f delta uh, t of t from the previous uh, equation this is what i'll get right so in this equation this 2 pi is constant so i'll take a outside here and this remaining term that is um, theta i of t plus t t delta t minus theta i of t divided by delta t is nothing but it is the standard definition of the derivation or differentiation function so it's a d by dt of the theta i of t okay so this is the equation i have got for a instantaneous frequency the differentiation of theta i of t will give you the multiply by 1 by 2 pi will give you the instantaneous frequency of the signal okay so in case of you know, as i told earlier theta i of t is such a body is 2 pi f c t plus phi c where phi c is the angle of the unmodulated carrier for message signal equal to zero for m of t equal to zero now let us understand the two different types of angle modulation this simple equations the paramodulated way the first one is a phase modulation so as i told earlier phase modulation is such a body is the type of angle modulation where the instantaneous angle that is theta i of t is actually changed or varied proportional to the message signal m of t okay that is if i substitute that so theta i of t is actually given by 2 pi f c t plus some phi c right where that phi actually represents the phase so i have to change the phase of the carrier proportional to the amplitude of the message signal so here m of t is the instantaneous amplitude of the message signal as this changes the phase part of this theta i of t also changes so that means phase modulation is happening proportional to the amplitude of the message signal so in this case this kp is nothing but it is uh, called as a phase sensitivity uh, factor or a parameter okay so which is measured always in radians per volt now i can get this phase modulated wave i can simply write a equation for that phase modulated wave that is s of t using this standard equation so what i will do here is i will substitute this uh, just give me a second yes so i substitute this uh, you know first theta i of t over here okay what i will get i will get the equation for s of t that is a phase modulated wave so s of t is given by ac uh, cos 2 pi f c t uh yeah ac cos super fct plus kp m of t is the standard equation for a phase modulated signal fine now a second one is a frequency modulation so where we actually change the frequency of the carrier signal proportional to the amplitude variation as amplitude increases or decreases proportionately we have to change the frequency of the carrier signal okay so i start with this, uh, considering the instantaneous frequency of the uh, carrier which is f i of t is given by f c plus k f m of t so in this case f c is nothing but it is the constant or you can say it is the central frequency of the carrier it's the uh, frequency of the unmodulated carrier let us say okay plus variation so the second part actually represents the variation of the frequency proportional to the amplitude of the message signal okay as the message signal amplitude changes okay the instantaneous frequency also changes that means the frequency at a different instant of time depends on the time uh, uh, instantaneous voltage of the message signal fine so the phi of t actually represents the instantaneous frequency of the modulated signal where this kf is nothing but again is a frequency sensitivity factor or a parameter which is measured again hertz in hertz per volt okay as you know already that uh, the instantaneous frequency is also given by one of the standard formula which is 1 by 2 pi d by dt of theta i of t which i explained in my previous slide right so what i will do here is for this particular equation i'll just rearrange this equation yeah that is i take a 2 pi on the other side so uh, d differentiation of uh, theta i of t is equal to i'll get 2 pi f i of t next i will take an integration on the both side okay so integration of differentiation of the term that integration differentiation cancels so i'll get only theta i of t this particular term okay so i take a differentiation of sorry integration here also which is given by integration of 0 to t 2 pi f i of t so what i will do now is i will substitute f f i of t so this f i of t i will substitute over here okay so i what i'll get so integration with respect to the time t there 0 to t 2 pi into f c plus uh, k f m of t that's what i'll get okay so it is 2 pi f c t the first part the integration of the first part i get something like this and the second part is it is 2 pi integration of m of t dt that's what i'll get 
Okay, so this is nothing but this is your theta of t. Once again, I will go to the standard equation of uh, s of t. Okay, then okay for the second part actually you know uh, corresponds to the variation in the amplitude of the message signal. So I can say theta of t also changes. That is angle part also changes. Hence the frequency also changes. Now what is the equation for frequency modulated signal in the time domain? Again, I start. This is the equation. So what I have done over here is I have taken a, a standard equation again that is AC cos theta of t, and I have substituted uh, this theta of t. Okay, so when this theta of t is substituted, uh, okay, here yeah, and I'll get an equation for the frequency modulated wave that is S of t is equal to AC into cos theta I of t. Theta I of t is nothing but this equation. Okay, so the equation for phase modulation is given by this. Why I have given this equation is I want to compare the frequency modulation with the phase modulation. Okay, so the frequency for sorry the equation for phase modulation and if I compare that with the frequency modulation, both are almost similar. AC cos of 2 pi f c t, 2 pi k f, which is a constant in the place of k p, I have 2 pi k f, but in place of m of t, I have an integration of m of t, right? That is the only difference. So the meaning of this is the frequency modulation and the phase modulation are almost same. That means I can get a frequency modulation from phase modulation and phase modulation from the frequency modulation. Fine. So what I have to do is Suppose I want to use a phase modulator, but I want to get the equation of frequency modulation. I want to use a phase modulator, but I want to uh, get the equation for frequency modulation. I want the output to be FM. Okay. What I have to do is, before you apply to the phase modulator, just integrate that message signal and then apply. Fine. So I will get this equation with the integration of M of T. So it is possible. right? So I will show you that in the next slide. Just look at this. This is what I have told earlier, how the substitution is done and how I got the equation for FM signal. Okay. Now, just look at, look at this. I want to relate the phase modulation with frequency modulation wave. Okay. So, as I told just now, so if I want to get a uh, FM wave, but I am using the phase modulator. Okay. I am using a phase modulator, but I want to get a FM wave. What I have to do? I have to just integrate the message signal. So, here I will get an integration of M of T. I get integration of m of t as the input for phase modulator. This is integration of m of t here, right? Which are 0 to t, the limits. Then I apply to the phase modulator. The phase modulator, modulator will produce the output as ac cos 2 pi fct plus 2 pi, that is kp constant multiplied by this input, right? That is integration of m of t, that's what I'll get. So that is nothing but it is the uh, fm, that is the frequency modulated wave. Okay, that's what uh, by I can use a phase modulator to get a frequency modulation. This is actually called as indirect way of getting a frequency modulation. Now, the other case, I use a frequency modulator, but I, the output should be phase modulation. What I have to do? If I apply a M of T directly to the frequency modulator, it will integrate that particular signal, right? According to the equation, I get an integrated version of the M of T, right? So, what I will do is I apply modulating wave to the differentiator, so I get a d by dt of the m of t. When I apply to the frequency modulator, what happens? It will integrate it. So that integration differentiation cancels and the equation whatever I have to get, just the m of t, I will get by this frequency modulator itself. Right? So in a way I can say that both are same but with additional circuits. Okay, I can generate a frequency modulation or maybe the phase modulator. That is, an integrator is used followed by a phase modulator will produce a FM signal and a differentiator followed by a frequency modulator will give you the uh, phase modulated signal. Now, let us understand this uh, concept by using a simple waveform. Okay, so the first one is a message signal, the second one is the frequency modulated signal. Okay, just compare the signal with the signal now. Yeah. So, as the frequency is in, sorry, as the amplitude of the message signal is increasing, okay, the frequency also continuously increases. Just look at this waveform, the frequency is not constant. The frequency is continuously changing or increasing as the amplitude is increasing somewhere, here, right? The frequency of the signal at this point and maybe this point are same, correct? It's almost same. It should be same. As the voltage decreases and goes below zero, the frequency also decreases. That means the frequency of this carrier is proportional to the amplitude of the message signal. Okay. Now, how to get phase modulation? I can get this phase modulation by using a uh, frequency modulator, right? As I told you know in the previous slide over here, I can get a phase modulated wave 
okay by using the frequency modulator but the thing is we have to differentiate the message signal right so let us see this now the third one actually represents the differentiation of the m of t my m of t is a sign signal the differentiation of m of t should be a cost right the 90 degree phase relationship that's what we should have between these two signals so this is the cost signal okay i have a differentiation of m of t so that differentiation of m of t i will apply to the frequency modulator that means i will draw a frequency modulated wave with respect to this waveform okay so just look at this as the voltage is decreasing continuously the frequency is also decreasing when the voltage goes below zero the frequency is smallest at the negative peak the frequency is smallest now again as the amplitude is increasing the frequency is also increases and we get highest frequency at the peak similar holds good for this equation also the same explanation right so this is how i can draw a phase modulated signal now if i compare this waveform the original m of t with the phase modulated wave just look at this as the voltage is increasing from between this to the peak of the signal only that time the peak frequency is increasing as the voltage starts decreasing something like this you look at this during this interval complete interval the frequency starts decreasing right so i get a maximum uh, you know the frequency somewhere here at somewhere here right that's what so this is the frequency uh, phase modulated signal okay so in this video i have explained uh, the basic concepts of angle modulation that is what is angle modulation is what are the different types of angle modulation is frequency modulation phase modulation and simple equations standard equations for uh, frequency modulation as well as phase modulation and i have also explained how we can get uh, a phase modulation by frequency modulation and frequency modulation by the phase modulation okay thank you for watching this video